Griefing is usually a hassle to deal with, but did you know there's quite some things you can do to counter griefers and avoid getting griefed altogether? Let me show you everything. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Griefing has been part of the wasteland ever since the release days, but every now and then it becomes more intense, especially in between patches when people are extremely bored. Now, I am often griefed probably because I make content and people know my name, otherwise I really wouldn't know, but the fact that I'm a hot target has allowed me to learn a lot about this topic and I do know how getting griefed is no fun so I decided to share my experience on how to better protect yourself from malicious players and their evil intentions to annoy you kill you or even destroy your entire camp plus most of you voted in favor of such video in a recent pool anyhow you might think there's nothing much you can do as anti-griefed methods but trust me there's plenty you can do to counter griefing with that being said, let's get into the 15 tips I have for you today. I am going to start by talking about anti-camp griefing strategies, and the most effective one is to build inside premades. As you may or may not know, griefers often use two methods to bypass pacifist mode and destroy any camp they want. The first one is with explosive bait and an exploit. They basically throw dozens of them to slowly but steadily destroy your entire camp. So if you are not aware you are getting griefed, it's quite common to return to a camp in ruins. If you detect it in time though, you can immediately leave the server to avoid any further damage. Now the second method they use is normally with a glitch as well and then shooting the camp with a specific hacked weapon just like this. Your camp vanishes in a matter of seconds, it's pretty brutal. I have been victim of both in the past and to be honest, there is nothing you can do to prevent the second method. Anyway, the strategy here is, if you build inside premades, it means you have no foundations, no walls and no roof. Just there you can save hundreds of materials when it comes to repairing, but there's more. Pre-made items get destroyed very easily, and as soon as they go down, they will automatically disable or hide any built items inside, which means if the inside items didn't get destroyed yet, they will be safe from any further damage. Isn't that convenient? Premades are cheap to repair, and you get to save dozens of built items from getting destroyed when griefed. Just look at the footage, my normal camp house got fully destroyed, meanwhile my brotherhood tower managed to save all but two items inside, when I have dozens of them, that's beautiful, I would have to spend hundreds more materials if it wasn't for this trick, I would have to repair my entire set of machines there and my med bay which is on the first floor and the roof got stuff there as well, so if you get camp griefed every now and then, or if you're a hot target like me, this is definitely a way to protect yourself. I mean, don't get me wrong, things can still get destroyed, yes, but not every single item anymore. You can at least minimize the damage you receive and save hundreds of junk in the process. Camp premades checked, what else can you do to protect your camp from griefers? Well, start building horizontally instead of vertically. I know this sounds really, really strange at first, but hear me out. Griefers need dozens and dozens of explosive baits to destroy an entire camp because, well, this item deals really low amounts of damage. But if you build your camp vertically, they can use fewer baits to kill several levels of your camp at once because the baits count as mines and they have a radius of damage, like an area of effect. It can get even larger with the grenadier perk for example. As such, if you expand horizontally, griefers will require way more baits to cover all the ground, all the corners and overall all that wide space you are using else they won't get the job done, and that's a good thing for you. Again, I know this doesn't prevent them from destroying stuff, but it's a way to make it a little bit more difficult for them to effectively grief you, and that counts as a countermeasure in my book. 
All right, the next tip is probably new to you, at least I haven't really seen anyone talking about this yet. Basically, you should leave your camp placement item outside your camp, as in outside of any building. Leave it on the ground, on the soil, instead of placing inside pre-mades or on top of foundations. Why, you may ask? Well, it's because if your camp gets grieved and destroyed, like it happened to me here, there is a chance your placement item will fall through the buildings and end up hidden inside of them. In this case, my placement item ended up inside the Brotherhood Tower Foundation, under the water on top of that, so I had issues finding it. Thanks to Mad Doc Rod for helping me out here, by the way. I had no idea this issue even existed before, well, I got griefed and then got hit by this nasty bug. I even doubt myself I couldn't find the item or remember exactly where I placed it. So spare yourself the trouble and leave this item outside. After all, this sort of event can be utterly frustrating and you might end up having to rebuild your entire camp. Because how else will you check inside all your foundations and pre-mates if this happens to you? I was actually really lucky here. My brotherhood tower is kind of floating on the water. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to see, use or move it. And if you are not able to access this item, there is no way to repair your camp all at once. You need to repair item by item. Now imagine if you have to repair dozens and dozens of items manually. Yeah, I am definitely leaving mine outside after this. I think you should too, but hey, it's your choice. Something else you should do is to build a shelter with all the essentials you are allowed to build. In other words, all the items you need in a daily basis and you are allowed to build inside the shelter, like a bed, crafting benches, special boost items, the symptomatic and so on. Now, I'm not entirely sure if shelters can or cannot be destroyed by other players. In theory, they can, but I haven't had any of my shelters destroyed until date, despite multiple camp griefs. Which makes me think griefers either cannot use their usual methods inside shelters, or they hate the loading screen and prefer to stay in the open world map. I really don't know exactly. But it's always a good idea to have a backup, a second option. I mean, if your camp gets destroyed, at least you can simply repair the shelter door and head inside the shelter to immediately access everything you need. So let's say you are low on scrap or you are missing a few items to instantly repair everything at once. Or even if you think you might get griefed again, very soon. For example, in this server, people were doing nukes, so I left my camp destroyed as it was, used my shelter, and proceed to do three queens after getting griefed. So yes, having an essentials shelter is a great idea. It's a must-have and a second layer of convenience. Now, let me introduce you to a preventive strategy by simply removing or disabling your player vending machine. That's right, when you are selling stuff through your machine, you are automatically enabling a fast traveling option to every player in your server, which means if you end up in the same server as griefers, your chances to become a random target are much higher simply because they can easily fast travel to your camp. I mean, if they cannot see where your camp is, they will most likely not go there, right? For the past months, I had my vending machine offline, mostly as a measure to avoid triggering the vending machine rear bug, but it also works as an anti-griefing method. During these past three months, I didn't get griefed once. Around Christmas, I decided to bring it back and ever since, my piece is gone. I have been getting griefed almost every single week, so this one definitely works. I can vouch for it. If you wish to get out of the griefer's radars, at least as a random target, just remove your vending machine and you're good to go. The Brahmin camp grief is basically as old as the game itself. It's there since the release days and I doubt Bethesda will ever fix it. Anyway, players can freely kill your cow without receiving any penalties, which means you often have to repair your Brahmin pen and that is costly over time. To avoid such hassle, I highly recommend you to replace your Moo Moo with chickens. I know you lose the milk, but you get more fertilizer and the chickens cannot be killed. 
there you go problem solved no more cow killers no more slaughter no more unnecessary pen repairs every now and then it's a very simple solution in my view now if you are wondering how to get the chicken house just head to sam at the foundation and you can purchase the plan for 750 gold bullion i know it's quite expensive but this is a lifetime camp upgrade that will work as an anti-grief strategy as well so go for it well this next tip is about trap camps which is one of the most common types of griefing in 76. there is no real way to immediately spot or avoid trap camps but there are a few hints you can look for which will trigger the suspicious alert first of all before visiting other camps and checking their vending machines I highly advise you to always store your junk, always, no exception. That way, if you end up getting griefed and dead, you don't lose anything. The second thing to do is to look for suspicious elements that most trap bases use, such as foundation houses with no windows at all, a basement level which cannot be accessed, very narrow corridors, strange rooms, mixed floors, trap spike ends coming through the floors, and signs to lure you inside, such as free goodies or cheap legendaries, that sort of call to action words. There are also closed camps where you must interact with an item to get inside and then you trigger the traps and die. There are many different types of this sort of griefing and some are actually hard to detect. Anyway, this sort of griefing is quite passive and not as concerning as the others in my opinion. You might end up dying, true, but you will hardly lose anything if you store your junk beforehand, so it could be worse, that's what I'm trying to say. We just went over camp anti-grief methods, now it's time to move to the killing ones. First of all, make sure to enable your pacifist mode. You don't want to end up engaging griefers by accident, by mistake, no, no, no. The second thing is to deny them any fight. That's usually what they are looking for. They want you to fight back just so they can kill you over and over again. Make sure to stay away from workshop, contesting and fights as well. Moving forward, there are multiple exploits out there to make sure you always win, so the best thing you can do is to deny them the fight they want. Let's not even go over the hacks and hacked weapons, which sadly are quite common these days. So I really think it's a waste of time to fight back when it comes to griefers. You will most likely lose and you're giving them the fun they want. You're giving them the satisfaction to kill you on their own terms. Basically, fueling their behavior to grieve others and seek the same reaction. I say, don't do it. Seriously, never fight back. Ay, 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 caramba. Okay, the next anti-grief tip is to make sure your HP is not extremely low when you spot a griefer. That's because there is, or at least there was, a heavy exploit using Rose's syringe that allowed griefers to bypass the pacifist mode and kill any players they wanted, as long as they had a really low HP. Yeah, bloodied builds were the main targets, as you can imagine. Basically, the syringe would boost the target's stats and shortly after, the same stats would expire and you would die because your HP would be higher with the syringe boost than the real HP you had left. I heard this exploit has been fixed now, but since I have no way to test it, I cannot confirm if it's indeed fixed or not. In doubt, I always use a rather way to go above 20% HP when I spot a griefer, just like here. To make sure I won't die that easily if they try anything else to bypass my pacifist mode. As I usually say, better safer than sorry. Another straightforward tip is to avoid going away from your computer or console. I understand that some of you do this all the time while trying to sell more items or for quick breaks, but this puts you at higher risk of getting griefed. Now, if you never get griefed, then well, great, fantastic. You have been lucky so far. However, if you get griefed every now and then, make sure to log off whenever it's break time, because you don't need to put an extra chance to get griefed on your shoulders. Griefers love to give a warm welcome to AFK players. I've seen it a few times in the past. It's quite pathetic from their end, but hey, they do it. So keep that in mind. 
Well, a lot of players get upset, frustrated and angry when they get griefed. It's a perfectly normal reaction when someone is being malicious towards you, but please, everyone, don't show it. Don't let your griefer know they are affecting you if they really are. First rule, never voice chat with them. Most of my past griefers always try to chat with me, trying to make me talk, trying to make me feel bad, uncomfortable, or even to show they're on top, you know, they're in control, but that's not true. You are the one in control, so don't give them what they want. Don't give them a reaction. The best thing to do here is to ignore them. Pretend you don't care or just serve a jump if things escalate from there. In my experience, the best thing to do is to walk away and move on. However, that's not always possible. Sometimes you are doing events, you claim several workshops and Nuke is coming and so on. In such cases, ignore Ignoring is the smartest thing to do. Talking about not giving them a reaction, hmm, you can actually react but with the opposite feelings of what griefers expect. Instead of showing anger and fury, show love. Spam heart emotes, pose in photo mode, dance, act in a weird way. Basically, try your best to become a boring target and they will easily leave you alone. I mean, griefers target people to annoy them, to enrage them even, not to bring them joy. So if you use counter logic here, you are playing your cards right. In this grief, they gave up on me very, very soon. I used hearts, posed, and then walked around them in circles. I even followed them around after that to watch them fight each other. And it didn't take long until they moved on to someone else. They didn't even bother attacking me or trying anything with me anymore. Kill them with kindness. It's not a bad tactic at all. I'm telling you. Let's not forget about the report functions. They exist for a reason. One of the main report categories is harassment, and you can use that to report any griefer you encounter along your journeys. For those of you who may not know, griefing is against Bethesda's terms of service, so it's totally fine to report players who harass you with griefing methods. You might want to collect proof and submit a ticket later attached to your in-game report whenever you can. Now, if you spot a griefer cheating as well, such as using hacked weapons, which is the most common thing, going through walls or flying like a parrot, you might want to report them for cheating too. <laughs> it's double report, double the efficacy as they say. So yeah, if you are thinking about logging off or changing servers, make sure to properly report your griefers first. Else, how is the system supposed to flag such offenders, hmm? Something else I want to share here is about the block option. Forget about it. Really. I have blocked some of my past griefers and nothing good came out of it. I could still see and hear them, they could still destroy my camp, and they could also end up in the same server as me in a later day. The block feature is there mostly for visual purposes, I think, because it doesn't seem to do much. I'm not even sure what it does, really. This option is either really buggy or utterly broken, maybe even both. So don't rely on it. Blocking griefers will most likely not protect you in any way possible. Just saying. All right, the last tip I have for you is the most logical and straightforward one. Change servers. If you find out you are getting griefed in a very unpleasant way, such as someone trying to destroy your camp, just quickly report and change servers. It's as easy as that, it's what I always do when I spot them early, but the problem is, well, most of the time you only notice you got griefed after the damage has been done. In that case, what happened cannot be undone, but you can always prevent further griefing by changing servers all the same. If you are sure the grief was done by someone in the current server you are, of course. When in doubt, always join another server, better safer than sorry, as I said already in this video. Getting griefed in Fallout 76 is sadly not uncommon, even when you play in pacifist mode. However, there is plenty you can do to reduce your chances to become a griefing target or to minimize the damage a griefer can do to you and your camp. The 15 anti-grief tips I shared in this video are mostly part of my learning process with getting griefed myself in the past years. At least there is a bright side to all of that. So I hope you found them useful, probably not all, I know, but at least some. 
And well, feel free to share any other tricks and methods you may have against griefers in the comments below. I'm all ears. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I am Marta Branco. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And that's it for my part. A special thanks to all my supporters. You guys are wonderful. And I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.